Hello, my name is Ward Bean. I'm a warm water fly tire from Council Bluffs, Iowa. Uh, I've been tying flies and fly fishing since I was a teenager, and I'll soon be celebrating my 71st birthday. I've been seriously tying flies for about the last 25 years. And when I retired in 1999, I decided to, to create a website for warm water fly tires because at about that same time, Warm Water Fly Fishing Magazine went bankrupt. And I was attending a number of shows like this show, which is the Southern Council Conclave in Mountain Home, Arkansas. And I was being told by, by people that were watching me tie that there just weren't any warm water fly or warm water flies being uh, illustrated in the fly fishing magazines at the time. So I created a website uh, called warmwaterflytire.com. One of the flies that I recently posted on the website on warm water fly tire is a fly called the jointed minnow. It's an articulated minnow that's tied in two, in two parts using two hooks. There's the rear part, or the tail, and then there's the head and body that's tied on the second hook. Uh, it's been a great little fly for me. I use it primarily for smallmouth bass, but others tell me that uh, they've used it for largemouth, stripers, crappie, you name it. It's just a, it's a good little fishing fly. So the hooks that I use are Mustad, the old standard Mustad 3366 bass bug hook and I use, tie it in a size two. This is a size two, must add 3366 bass bug hook. It's a straight eye, wide bend, and it works just beautifully for this, for this uh, jointed minnow or articulated minnow. And I, I use two hooks to make the fly. In addition to the 3366 hook, I use a bit of marabou for the tail, and, I also, and the body then is made with something called Palmer chenille. Okay, as you can see, I've inserted, I've inserted the th must add 3366 size two hook in the vise. What I'm going to do first is cover the shank in, entirely with six aught thread. In this case, it's six aught uni thread. I'm just gonna cover the shank. And the reason I use six aught uni thread as opposed to a heavier thread is that, that I don't want a lot of bulky thread buildup when I tie off both parts of the fly. So you'll see that I'm, because I'm using a fairly thin thread, I'm, on a, I'm going to spiral the thread up and, up and back on the hook several times to get a good solid thread base. From the eye, clear back to the hook bend. Okay, once that's done, first thing I'm going to do is add the tail portion. And since the Palmer chenille, I'm sorry, since Palmer chenille doesn't make a very good tail, I use a marabou plume, a white marabou plume, and I just tie it in at the base of the, at the, at the end of the hook, at the, right at the bend. Make sure your thread goes all the way back to the bend. So there's the marabou tail. Now remember, we're making the back part of the hook. So the first thing I'm gonna do, or the second thing I'm gonna do to make the back part of the fly is tie in the Wapsi Palmer chenille. And then I'm gonna wrap it. So tie it in at the base of the marabou. Run your thread all the way to the front of the hook, to, up to the hook's eye, and then palmer the chenille. That's why it's called palmer chenille. You can wrap it to form the body. Just palmer it all the way up the body. Every turn you make, one turn and tight against the previous turn, stroke the fibers back so that all of the fibers sweep to the rear of the hook. Now we're almost there. We almost have the first part of the fly complete. Make sure it's wrapped tight against the hook eye, clear up to the hook eye. Once it's there, tie it off. 
Remove the excess Palmer chenille. Form a neat, minimal thread head. And then you can tie it off with a whip finish or a couple half hitches. I prefer a half hitch tool and a couple half hitches, but tie it off either way. Clip the thread, and that part of the fly is finished up to this point. So we're going to lay it aside, and we're going to start the second part of the fly. Put another 3366 hook in the vise. The same way you did with the rear section. Start the thread at the hook eye and lay down a thread base all the way to the rear of the hook, clear to the end of the shank, right up to the bend. You have a long strand like that to keep wrapping with the blade. Okay, once that's done, you then have to add lead weight to this fly. You could probably do it a number of ways. You could put a, you could put a, a, a cone head on the front. I don't like cone heads. I prefer to just weight the entire shank with 030 lead wire. So I, I put as much wire on the shank as I can get on the shank. And that also gives the fly a jigging action because this is the front part of the fly that's going to be weighted. So you can see that the shank is pretty well covered with, with lead. Now what I need to do is create a hinge so that I can attach the rear part of the fly to the front part, give it, giving it the articulated uh, uh, motion that we want. And to do that, I use Mason Hard Mono, nine pound Mason Hard Mono. You can buy it from most fly time material suppliers. Cut off a, a small piece of that, Mason Hard Mono, and bind it to the rear, to the top of the shank from the thread or from the uh, wire wraps to the rear of the fly, to the right up to the where the hook begins to bend. Once you've done that, you have one more process. You'll see there's a hook in the rear section that I'm going to put on here. I don't want that hook on the rear se in the rear section, so I need to remove it. And the way I remove it is I stroke all the materials use a side cutter and cut it cut the hook bend off and you end up then with the rear portion of the fly without a hook on it and at this point then you can bind it you can you can attach it to the front part of the fly which I'll do now just pull the mason hard mono forward to make a small loop bind it down Remove any excess, and there's the rear part of your hook. Now we have to basically repeat the process on the front part of the hook. The first thing I'm going to do, because I want to cover that hinge area so that it can't be seen, is I take another marabou plume. In this case, I have a bit of a stem in the marabou plume, so I'm going to pluck out the center part of the stem. We have a and you just lay it over the top so that it covers that, that part where the hinge is. Run your thread up to the, up to the lead, put the, put the marabou on top, make sure that it's covering the hinge area, and then wrap your thread back to the base of the of the, or to the bend of the hook. Now we're ready to repeat the process. We're just we're going to tie in another piece of Palmer chenille. Take the thread to the front of the hook, spiral the thread to the front of the hook, and then begin the wrapping process all over again. Make sure you wrap it up to the eye and as tight as you can around the eye. All right, we're there.
Take a couple wraps to bind it down. Remove the excess Palmer chenille. Form a neat thread head. And then use the whip finisher a couple half inches to tie the fly off. Then you're ready for the fun part. Remove the thread. Now this fly could probably be fished just as it appears, but if you want to give it a middle shape, use a uh, use a curved scissors, serrated scissors, and you can you can trim it. Start on one side, go to the top, go to the other the other side. If you start it on the left, then go to the right side, and you'll see it take form. And when it does, at this point, it's just a matter of how much trimming you want to do. I like to trim them so that they're fairly fairly slim or slender because this material does slim down a little bit in the water but not much. So there's there's the fly with the minnow shape. You can see the articulated part, see how the how it's the joint makes this part move in the water and gives the articulated motion. Now that the fly has been trimmed, we're ready to give it the coloring that we want. You could fish it this way and it probably would catch fish, but I like to make them look a little more realistic. So in this case, I'm going to make the fly look like a baby or represent a baby bluegill or a baby brim. I use two kinds of markers. If you go to any Hobby Lobby, you'll find that a Hobby, Lo that a Hobby Lobby stores, no matter where the store is, has, offers two kinds of markers. They offer the standard Prismacolor marker that most fly tires are familiar with, but they also offer a a uh, marker called Copic, C-O-P-I-C, yeah, C-O-P-I-C, and you, Copic has a, a lot more colors, color selections than Prismacolor does. In fact, Prismacolor doesn't have an olive, at least the kind of olive I like, but Copic does. So you're going to want to use, you're wanna, going to want to go to Hobby Lobby to find the colors. The first thing I'm going to do is make the back on the fly, and you can see that the pen has a fine point and a broad tip point. I use the broad tip point, pick the fly up, hold it between your fingers, and I'm going to make the back and the sides olive color. And work it in, work the color in. Real well. You don't want to be gentle with it. Lay it down on a piece of paper or whatever. And make sure you get get the color, get everything colored that you want colored. In this case, I want to leave just the belly that will be orange. The rest of it will be olive. Once you, once you add the color and before it dries, pick the fly up and stroke it hard, as hard as you can with your thumb index finger and middle finger and what that does is it helps set the color it welds the color to the chenille and you'll find that it won't wash off in the water when you're fishing it you should feel the feel your fingers getting warm as you're as you're doing that so we've got the back part done now we're going to do the belly In this case, we want an orange belly, so we're going to work some orange into the belly of the fly. Once that's done, you can, you can still do a little more trimming if you like to make the fly look just a little better. Again, the fish aren't going to care, but you might. So. There's your baby bluegill at this point. The only thing we have to remaining to do is to add the eyes. Okay, we're ready to put the eyes on. The first thing we're gonna do is add a little dollop of goop at about this point right here. Not a lot, just a little. Put the goop on the, on the material.
and then set the eye in the goop. So that takes care of that eye. Then we need to do the same with the eye on the other side. Just a little dollop of goop. Make sure you work it into the material a little bit. Make sure you put the cap back on the goop immediately. If you lay it down on your bench and forget to put the cap on it, you'll have a pile of goop on your bench in about two minutes. You don't want that. Put the other eye on. Remove the fly from the vise and set the eyes in the place you want them. And there's your finished articulated or jointed bluegill. It's ready to be fished. <laughs>